How's it going guys? 4.58 a.m. February 1st here in Japan. We have a medium difficulty question for pharmacology for step one. They ask this question on the NBME exams for the step one. I decide to be a fucking asshole, however, and put all these mechanisms of action in the NBME question. They just ask for the drug name. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to Telegram group and channel are down below. And I start the clip. 34-year-old woman. She has a three-month history of psoriasis. Okay. And it's not responded to topical medications. So Calcipotriene is a high yield vitamin D derivative, triamcinolone, high yield glucocorticoid, and this need not be topical. I've seen uh, questions where they inject this into the carpal tunnel, okay, for carpal tunnel syndrome from the medicine, and uh, hasn't responded to coal tar either. So now they're asking for an oral agent, and they want to know <clears throat> what drug it is on the NBME exam. And as I already fucking said, I was an asshole and decided to put mechanisms of action here. So Let's just whip through the answer choices here. Next best step, we'll go backwards. Choice G, probably. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Ribonucleotide reductase, wrong fucking answer. This refers to hydroxyurea. Not a high yield drug for you, Assimile. You could just be aware that it increases HBF in sickle cell. Okay, and it can also be used to decrease sickle crises, can be used in polycythemia vera. That's all you need to know for your simile. The rest is nonsense. Wrong fucking answer. Purine synthesis, wrong answer. Could refer to a myriad of agents. Uh, PRPP amidotransferase inhibitors, 6 mercaptopurine, azathioprine. Could refer to mycophenolate malfatil inhibits, uh, IMP dehydrogenase. Nonsense. Garbage. Wrong fucking answer. mTOR, wrong answer. Uh, this would be sirolimus, <clears throat> so sirolimus, uh, an immunosuppressant. Uh, you could just be aware that sirolimus can cause dyslipidemia. It does not cause nephrotoxicity. It does not decrease intracellular calcineurin. Okay, that's more higher level stuff. Step one's pass fail now. Nothing to get hysterical about. Point is, it's the wrong fucking answer. IMP dehydrogenase, as I just said, this could refer to mycophenolate mofetil, garbage answer choice, okay? Back in the day when step one was numerical, all shooting for a 280, we memorized a lot of low-yield nonsense drugs, hoping that they would show up and uh, set us apart, but they didn't, okay? Wrong fucking answer. DNA replication via alkylation, uh, nebulous answer choice, wrong answer. This refers to cyclophosphamide, which is uh, an alkylating agent at guanine N7. Okay, it's a guanine N7 alkylating agent. A high yield point about cyclophosphamide is that it causes hemorrhagic cystitis. There's a metabolite called acrolein, which is toxic to the bladder. So you can give mesna uh, to mitigate the toxicity to the bladder. Mesna has a thiol group, which is an SH group, a sulfur atom. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, diadro or dehydrogenase refers to a drug called leflunamide for sometimes for autoimmune diseases like RA or lupus. Absolute garbage drug. Don't think I've ever seen it assessed once. Wrong fucking answer. Diadrofolate reductase inhibition, correct answer. Okay, this is methotrexate. So this is what they do on the NBME exam. They just say, literally, they just say a woman in her 30s. She has psoriasis, a two-liner, and she's failed topicals with vitamin D, glucocorticoid, and coal tar. And then they say, what's the next best step in pharmacologic therapy and their oral medications? And the answer is just methotrexate. Okay, so methotrexate, high yield agent that inhibits diadrofolate reductase. So when I ask students, when I'm assessing students in terms of the high yield farm, and I'll say, can you tell me high yield, uh, two high yield use cases for methotrexate? What I want to hear is, the first line oral agent that NBME likes for psoriasis after the patients fail topicals. You can also use uh, oral methotrexate just straight up if a patient has systemic psoriasis, okay? If they have uh, psoriatic arthritis, okay, 15% of patients will get psoriatic arthritis uh, preceding any development of skin lesions, okay? Uh, you can use just oral methotrexate and also high yield use case is the first line DMARD for rheumatoid arthritis. Long discussion, made plenty of clips on this stuff, but when we're treating RA, you're going to use NSAIDs, 
followed by steroids for symptoms only. And then for DMARDs, which will slow disease progression, we start with methotrexate. If that fails or there's certain contraindications like pulmonary fibrosis, as an example, we move to uh, TNF-alpha agents, okay, infliximab, adalimumab, etanercept, et cetera. So diadrophilic reductase, you can be aware that there's other agents, pyrimethamine, trimethoprim, that also inhibit this enzyme, but that's not as high yield knowing that those drugs mechanism of action. I would say it's more just methotrexate you need to know here. Real quick, calcineurin, tacrolimus, and cyclosporin will decrease intracellular calcineurin. Okay, they're immunosuppressants that contrast with cyrolimus, as I mentioned before, which uh, binds to mTOR. So tacrolimus can cause diabetes. Uh, cyclosporin causes nephropathy, causes hypertension, causes hypertrichosis, which is increased hair growth, and can cause gingival hyperplasia. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.